guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today I am doing my August reading wrap-up. So overall, I had a really good reading and audiobook listening month. As far as like averages go, I think I average like six and a half, seven books a month. And I read seven books this month, but some of them were rather large and kind of more difficult to get through. So I'm a little bit proud of myself. I had an overall good month, but it was kind of weird. I put a little bit too much pressure on myself, which was totally silly, with Booktubeathon at the beginning being my first readathon, and then Jeff picking my TBR for me, and then I had a couple of other books that I already had to read because I just wanted to in this particular month, so I had a little bit too much on my plate. But first, we're going to start off with the books that I read for the last half of Booktubeathon. I've already briefly talked about these in my Booktubeathon wrap-up, and the beginning portion of Booktubeathon was the end of July, so I talked about those in my July wrap-up, but these are the ones I finished in August. So first up, I finished The BFG by Roald Dahl. This is a children's book about a big friendly giant who befriends a little girl and they go on a journey and they have to get help with a task and an adventure and it's very whimsical and fun and very rolled doll. I also watched the movie for this which I've been trying to do like while I read and then watch the movies. The book I really liked. I think that I gave it just under four stars just because it wasn't like crazy crazy good for me but I really really enjoyed it still but it's really cute and if you like like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Matilda and all those kinds of things then I think you'll enjoy this one plus it has beautiful illustrations. The movie adaptation was really good also I like the movie adaptation a lot. It might have been the closest book to movie adaptation I've ever seen. The vibe of the movie was a little bit more, more like whimsical and magical and almost dark, whereas this one's kind of more silly and fun, but I thought it was beautiful. I was really surprised at how well it turned out, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Next up, I read Ash by Melinda Lowe. This one is a Cinderella retelling which kind of features a female-female romance, like a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> um, I did enjoy this one. It is told very much in a fairy tale style. So it's told very much like an old tiny story. It's even got like the old tiny like writing like at the beginning of the chapter and I think I would have enjoyed this one more if I hadn't been doing Booktubeathon. This was not a good Booktubeathon pick because while it was really good and enchanting and there was fairies and magic and you know all the Cinderella goodness, it was just not a fly through book and I didn't really want to fly through it because I kind of wanted, wanted to absorb the world. So I did like this one. I gave it 3.5 stars, which I might have given it more, like I said, if I wasn't trying to like read it really fast, but as a retelling, it was excellent. Then I read Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson and this is a um, kind of Peter Pan retelling, but with the focus on Tiger Lily, who is a native to Neverland, and she's like a normal girl, but a native to a tribe, and we follow her, and like, how she meets Peter, and like, all those things, and just stuff about her life, and the tribe that she's in, and Neverland, and magic, and like, how she came to be, and uh This is Margot Wood's favorite book I believe or it was at one point and I have been this was like one of the first books I picked up last year and I've just been like saving it for the right time and this was the right time because I read Peter Pan in July and this one I read at the very end of book two with on and this was a great one for a readathon. I wished I would have read it a little bit slower because I just loved being in the book so much and I just would get like goosebumps while I was reading it because I was just like, oh, this is a special one. You know how you just, when you read certain books, you're just like, mm, this one, even before it's over. And the ending, it was like beautifully like heartbreaking, but sweet and just perfect and oh, I loved it so much. It's my favorite Jodi Lynn Anderson book now. I think I've read like three of hers so far. Definitely one of my all-time favorites. I like love Peter Pan retellings apparently, which you'll hear about in my audiobook wrap up. But yes, if you haven't checked out Ti Tiger Lily, this is a special one. Oh, and it is also told from Tinkerbell's perspective. So Tinkerbell is the narrator talking about 
Tiger Lily and her life and Peter Pan and all those things. And that was just amazing. And I gave Tiger Lily five stars. Okay, the next two books I read just of like my own accord for specific reasons. And then the last portion of the video I'm gonna talk about my books that my husband picked out for me. So I finished the uh, Infernal Devices with Clockwork Princess. I'm following along with Emma Reads. She's doing a year-long readathon of all the Shadowhunters books, and this one was next up on my list, and I could not wait to get to it, as you guys may have seen from my, my July reading wrap-up. I completely fell in love with the characters in the second book, even more so in here. I kind of went like this for like the first 150 pages. Like I was enjoying it, but not as much as I wanted. But the last portion of the book, I was just like, I was just like angsty and excited and sad and worried and happy and fearful. And I loved these characters like so much more than I realized because I was kind of talking to my husband about it. And I was like, I'm not really sure that I liked it that much. And then he's like, you don't get this emotional if you don't like a book. <laughs> and I was like, that's true. So I really loved it as a series. I just, again, agree with everyone. The way that this book was concluded was the absolute perfect way to end a trilogy like this. Definitely my favorite love triangle and I'm kind of I kind of enjoy love triangles but this one was just absolutely spectacular and beautiful and now I've read it and I'm so proud of myself. And I gave Clockwork Princess 4.5 stars. Then I read The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. I didn't know where to put this one because I started off listening to the audiobook and then I switched to the physical book. But because I read more than I listened to, I decided to put it in this wrap-up. But I will briefly talk about this in my audiobook wrap-up just so you guys can know about the narrator and like what I thought about it. And I was doing it via audiobook because I thought it was a good way for me to like get through it without taking away from the other books that I needed to read. I wound up like switching to audiobook with a lot more books than I was planning. So I decided to, towards the end of the month, I decided to switch to reading this one because I was almost done like reading my TBR books. And I am so glad that I did. I really enjoyed the audiobook, but this one, like for me, I don't know why it's, it's, this one is a dystopian book about like kids that have powers and a plague that happens and their, you know, government or control and all those kinds of things. And I wanted to read it because the movie was coming out and I was really worried about it because I did not like Passenger by Alexander Bracken really at all. And I had the exact opposite experience. With Passenger, I read half the book and then switched to audiobook and still didn't like it. With this one, I was liking it on audiobook and then switched to book and liked it even more. This one was one of those ones that I wanted to like get up in the morning and read and like I read read like a hundred pages at a time instead of just like you know 40 or 50. I just I loved it but I personally really like dystopians especially if they're written well and you love the characters and this is not like a super fast-paced dystopian in my personal opinion like there is action and there is like some things happening I'm sure there's gonna be more in the second and third book but this one is just more character development and I just felt like it was done really well and I really enjoyed reading from um, the perspective of a Ruby in here and I just, I don't know, I was just really attached. I really enjoyed it and I, the ending, the ending was like, ooh, just my heart and just, uh, oh my gosh, like it wasn't like a major like crazy shock or anything but it was just like, oh. And I was, I don't know, I'm really, really excited to read Never Fade now, and I'm so happy that I liked this so much. So I don't know if you guys saw my TBR video or not, but I will post it down below for August. My husband picked out my books for me, and he didn't care whether I listened to them on an audiobook or read them, so I wound up physically reading two, and then the rest of them I listened on an audiobook, and then I, I didn't make it to two, which I'll talk about in the end. So the first one that I read from his list was uh, Alias Hook by Elisa Jensen. This one's actually an adult novel, which I didn't know. A lot of times they'll change the sizes when it's an adult book, so that's kind of like a tell for me. But it does have slightly more mature content, a little bit more like um, sexual content. Nothing major in my opinion. It depends 
on like your viewpoints on that. I thought it was like very well done and nothing like like major graphic sex scenes or anything like that. Um, but there is some more mature content in here. But this one is basically kind of a retelling of Peter Pan, but it's like the life and times of like Captain Hook and like how he came to be like in Neverland and turn into Captain Hook. And then he has like things that are happening that he's trying to figure out and there is some someone that comes into the book that's really cool and there are fairies in here and mermaids of course and so it's got all that Peter Pan goodness but you're getting it from Captain Hook's perspective and I am a sucker for two things apparently a Peter Pan retelling and a villain like backstory slash perspective I think Captain Hook is one of the easiest villains to sympathize with and so that's what makes it so fun and so common for people to write about him. Um, I have quite a few like Captain Hook specific retellings but it is just so good. I loved the way that it was written. It definitely takes a little bit longer to get through kind of like Ash that I was talking about earlier but it is worth it. The like folklore and all that Peter Pan goodness is in here. But in this book, just so you know, Peter Pan is a little jerk, which he kind of is in Peter Pan as well. But Lisa takes that like jerkiness of Peter Pan and just amplifies it. So you get a little bit of a villainy Peter Pan in here, which is really cool and fun to read about. Really, really enjoyed it. It was very unique and different and also a little bit heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time. So yeah, really great. And I gave Alias Hook four stars. Then I read Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevens. I started this one really early in the month. I had a hard time getting through this classic book, which I normally don't have a hard time getting through classics. They do take me a little bit longer, obviously, just because of the time period and the way they were written. But this one, of course, is like our <laughs> classic piratey, adventure book. It's one of the original like pirate adventure tales. It's about a boy that winds up with some pirates. There's like adventure and treasure of course and an island of course. I think because I was a little bit overbooked, <laughs> no pun intended or pun intended, um, for my reading that I just I was wanting to read other things so I wasn't like completely focused when I was reading this until like the last portion of it. So I enjoyed it like kind of. I think it was more my fault than it was the book's fault. I just was like distracted. And also I might have read too many piratey books this month because I read uh, Tiger Lily which had some pirate stuff in it. And then Alias Hook and then also I had like two or three more on my audiobook situation and this even wound up being like similar to Peter Pan in certain ways where there was like an island and treasure and pirates and so they didn't blend together but it like kind of and our villains started to seem the same and I don't know. I would still recommend this one especially if you like pirates or children's classics. I don't think it was like super difficult to read and it's not very long and this is like one of my most beautiful books and I'm really glad I read it and I want to watch the movie but unfortunately I was just very distracted while reading it so I wound up giving this one 3.5 stars. So those are all the books that I physically read for August. I wound up not making it to two of the books that Jeff recommended for me. Technically two and a half but you'll hear about the half in my audiobook wrap up. But I did not wind up reading all the way William Shakespeare's Star Wars by Ian Dosher and I'm debating on unhauling it. This is Star Wars told in Shakespearean prose um, in sonnet form. I love Shakespeare and I enjoy Star Wars but when I started reading this I was just like ugh. But again it might have just been a distraction thing. This one is a library edition so I thought about just unhauling it and then if I find another version then I'll read that. It is a really cool idea and I'd like to read it someday but I just I just didn't wind up making it this month. And then really sad, and Jeff was like, I knew this was gonna happen. I didn't wind up making it to Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thief, which I'm so bummed about because I've been putting this off for so long. I have read this before, but I wanna reread it so I can read the rest of the Percy Jackson books. But part of the reason I didn't get to this is because I started a lot of series this month because of the TBR that Jeff picked for me. In audiobooks, I started Peter and the Starcatchers and Aragon and then in regular books I started the uh, Darkest Mind series and I just I didn't want to start another series because I really like to like keep reading them 
Plus, Jeff wound up listening to some audiobooks with me this month, which has really not happened very often. So I think we're going to try and read or listen to this one together, and I'll maybe do a vlog on it, so it'll be like more of an event type video. This is the only major one that I didn't get to from that TBR, but overall, I think I did pretty good. So those are all the books I read and didn't read in August. I had a pretty good month. I was kind of just, like I said, so distracted and like pressuring myself, but I really, really enjoyed a lot of the books that I read. I'll be posting my audiobook wrap up tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I also listened to seven audiobooks. And if you guys want links to Goodreads for any of these books to add them to your TBR, they will be down below in the comments, so be sure to check there. And I'll see you guys next time on the bright side. Bye!